Hi everybody, this is Urkin Fresh, aka Blue Phoenix. I'll be going over how to make a cool sounding pad in this tutorial. Uh, here's an example of uh, what we'll be making. And you can also have a gating effect on that. So that's what we'll be making in the tutorial. Um, first thing, uh, if you follow my base tutorial, um, my prior tutorial, we made a pretty cool 16th note bass. What I've done is I've taken that pattern and uh, for one bar it's at C, one bar it's at G, one bar of F, and then one bar down to C again. This is just basically a one, five, four, one pattern. Um, if we look over in our uh, chord line, you're going to want C, that same C, G, F, C pattern uh, with the, uh, the second note three notes up and the highest note four notes above that. Bang, bang, bang. One, five, four, one. Okay. So uh, first thing we're going to do here is just copy that over in, into, uh, whoa, what the heck? That should have been the stop button into our new... Um, our new thing here. I'm going to use uh, Zebra 2 for this. Uh, it is my favorite synth right now by far. I, I love this thing. So uh, let's get that over here. And I will be using this too as a reference throughout. So bear with me while I get that over here. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first thing you're going to want to do here is load the initialized patch. It just gets us back to having like nothing really going on here. And uh, for oscillator one, um, basically it's gonna have a square wave. So uh, square wave, and let's fire it up. Let's do a solo on that one. Ooh! Oh, it sounds so good. No, not really. Um, key to making good pads is just to have a whole lot of waveforms going on. Fortunately in Zebra you can do an 11 mode. And uh, detune those so they're not all on top of each other. And I like to give it a little bit of vibrato. Um, I'm going to add another oscillator here and use a saw tooth. Turn that uh, square wheel off for a second here. Turn it up to 11. Vibrato. I'm actually going to go ahead and tune that up one octave, but uh, turn it down a little bit, I think. And it's good to increase your width on pads. It just, uh, what that's doing is panning each of those 11 waveforms out to the sides. Gives it a little bit more uh, stereo effect, which is always nice. Um, for pads, it's really good to have a good attack and release on them. And that's how they kind of melt together now. And uh, I'm actually going to take the sustain down just a little bit. That way, as that hits its peak, it's going to kind of fade away just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to add just a low pass filter on here. Give it some key follow. So the higher notes are going to get a little bit more of that uh, open filter there. Get some drive. We're going to map this later so that uh, you can automate this for filter sweeps. But uh, just set to a good optimal area. Let's hear how that sounds with the uh, with the bass going on here. Let's get that out of the way. It's not too shabby. Now, uh, if you are using Zebra Two, you can actually add a I'm gonna add a third oscillator here, and uh, I'm going to use their um, the synth has an additive mode into it as well. 
So I'm gonna actually gonna go in here and I'll just turn these other ones off for a sec. Let's give you some really kind of weird metallic sounds here. One thing that's nice here is you have uh, kind of a wavetable in, uh, in Zebra. I'm actually going to go ahead and morph that across. So Take that to wave 8 and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this 11. And what we're going to do is have that wave change uh, with a global LFO. I'm going to set it to four bars. I think if I set it all the way, it might go through the entire wave table now. Again, turn that width all the way up and... Uh, Just a hair of that. So if you're not using um, Zebra, obviously you can't, you might not be able to follow with that, but it's only a subtle effect here on these pads. I think that's really about it for uh, Zebra. So let's go ahead and add the rest of the, uh, the goodies here. Now uh, I've got set up here a, a, a long reverb. I use Ether for my reverb. Um, it's just a really nice synth. And for my delay, I'm currently using Timeless from FabFilter. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and send those over. I've already set those up. Uh, I'm not going to tutorial on reverb right now, but uh, gives it a nice uh, kind of delayed effect. Um, I'm also demoing this uh, MFM2 from, from Yuhi. Um, Probably gonna buy it soon. I, I really like it. It's it's a pretty awesome uh, feedback unit. But uh, for now, we'll just put it back into Timeless, which I actually own. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and um, get the rest of the effects here. Um, so one thing I do is go ahead and throw a uh, auto filter on here, and just filter out the lower frequencies, and it will uh, that'll help it not clash with the bass so much so let's just see how it sounds with everything going on so you can see there's a little bit of muddying up in the in the lower end so let's, let's bring that up to around you know 450 or so you can also hear that the pads are kind of overpowering the kick drum right now just gonna side chain compress and get rid of that problem Um, so here, uh, if you the release is kind of where you're going to get the biggest effect out of your compressor. It makes a huge difference between like one, and, uh, say 120. So really, it's personal preference. You know, whatever you want for your particular track, you get more of a pumping sound with this 121 or so. That that sounds pretty good to me. If I was writing a track like this, however, if you go to like uh, 175 BPM, it's probably too too long now. Maybe pull that back a little bit, or at uh, let's drop to 90. You might want more of a release. It's up to you, of course. It's all up to you, okay? So let's go back to trans mode here. Um, I also had added a uh, phaser on mine. Uh, again, that's kind of a personal taste. If you if you don't want it, if you don't like the way it sounds, then uh, you know obviously don't do that. <laughs> um, I really like again. <laughs> this is Yuhi's uh, software. Uh, their phaser is really awesome. So um, I like to use this bass sanctuary. Although we have cut the bass off already 
good to have. What it does is it won't phaser the lowest frequencies. Um, I think I like to also get the left and the right channel to be a different uh, frequency in the phaser. That's, that's too much phaser in my opinion, so I, I kind of pull it back towards the dry a little bit. Want to be more of a subtle effect. And uh, there was just one more effect here I had was uh, Camel Space. I really like Camel Space. It's a fun tool to use. Um, just for a very quick, kind of transgated kind of thing. Um, you just fill in all these bars and set it to one. And uh, you can also uh, mess with your sustain here. Camel Space made it a little bit louder. Quite a bit louder. So, um, one thing you always should be careful with when you are dialing in your uh, your effects is make sure the volumes are about the same because you can't do a good A-B comparison. Like, does this really sound better or is it just louder? <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, Camel Space isn't the only tool that'll do this. There's, there's others out there. You could even do a volume automation on there if you were really wanted to torture yourself. So uh, let's just listen to the first one. Oh, that's without gating. Let's turn that gating on. Sounds about the same. So I think I nailed that one from what I was doing earlier. <laughs> um, also a quick lesson here about chord inversions. Uh, you'll notice maybe this this part here sounds a little funny because of this really high uh, note here. Let's try that gating back off. Um, so a chord inversion, you just take these notes here and you drop them down an octave. So what you end up here, you still have the one five four one sound, but you're not getting that weird high frequency up here. Again, personal taste, you know, whatever you're doing for your track. What you could do is uh, at the beginning of your track, use uh, chord inversions, and at the end, or towards the middle where you're building a climax, you might go ahead and, and use them up here. So uh, just some ideas to throw around. One other thing we can do here in Zebra, because uh, we have this cutoff here, is uh, I always like to map, use these XY pads as much as possible, uh, and then set the uh, max and min to where what sounds good, right? That seems pretty good. That's quite too low. Um, you probably wouldn't have the filter that low in the main part. Let's see. But like in a build up, would you start all the way down there? Maybe? Something like that. It's pretty good. And of course, uh, I always like to go ahead and select all and group and then uh, configure. Add that knob here, and then map the knob to one of these knobs here in the instrument rack. Then you can rename it, and it's just easier to, to automate this knob. So you're doing your um, your build up. You might just sweep this in. And you might do something like uh, cut off or uh, resonance here on the Y. It really accentuates your filter sweep. And again, you can map that over here. And resonance 
Uh, one second. You probably would want this. It's probably a little severe, but you get the picture here. So, uh, there you go. That's how you can make a basic synthy pad. Uh, next time, I'm not going to go over what's in this little secrets area, which I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, I'm going to be doing some box pads in the next tutorial. So, hope to check. Hope you'll check it out in a, a week or two. And I hope that helps with your productions. Practice and uh, get better. <laughs> Always save your work, control S. Oh, and you can also, of course, save your preset for next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>